All right, guys, welcome to another math tutorial video. This video is going to be on the topic of synthetic division. Now, synthetic division, in my own opinion, is a very uh, simple process and one that my students have enjoyed very much just because, it, well, it, is, it isn't difficult, to be quite frank. Now, uh, synthetic division is the idea of taking a polynomial with an x, uh, x power of greater than two or a variable to a greater power than two and factoring it, dividing it by something, that kind of thing. It's really not a terribly frustrating concept. So I'm going to go ahead and move to a new sheet here and uh, write out an example problem. So an example problem you might see would be something like 3x to the third, as I said, has to be greater than 2, plus 7x to the second, minus 14x, minus 24, divided by, uh, let's do x minus 2. Now, this is kind of a just a simple trick to solving this problem correctly. You can do long division on polynomials like this and their divisors, but let's be honest, who really wants to do long division? It's, it's not an extremely exciting process to do long division. So this makes it a lot simpler, and it works every single time. So we'll go ahead and fill, start doing this process. Now to begin synthetic division, to begin the division process, we want to isolate the number in our divisor. Now this is a negative two. What you always want to do here is take this number and flip the sign. Flip the sign. So a negative two is going to become a positive two. So at the beginning of our little work area down here, we're going to write a positive two and just kind of put it in a box, sort of half box separate it from the rest of the numbers we're going to put down. And then we are going to focus on these coefficients. These numbers are really what we're going to be dividing, what we're going to be working with. So we want to take each of these coefficients and write them in a line next to our two. So we're going to start with 3, 7, negative 14, and negative 24. We leave a space, because this is going to be like a big addition problem, and then draw a line under it, like so. So what we want to do is, well, the first thing I like to do is write a plus sign here. You always add on synthetic division. But for whatever reason, every time I go to do this, and say it's been a couple months since I've done a problem like this, I just always forget, do I add or do I subtract? And I end up having to do a couple practice problems just to figure out which one works correctly. Uh, but you do always add. So I make it a habit to write that plus sign first to make sure I know what I'm doing. Just make it a habit. Now once you have this done, we're going to go ahead and start this process. Now it's easier just to see this process done than to explain it. So I'm gonna talk about it as we go through it. We begin by taking this first coefficient this first number, the three in this case, and dropping it straight below this line. Below this line is where we're gonna get our answer to the problem. So we're gonna drop it straight below that line. Now the way I like to say this is every time a number drops below the line, we multiply it by what's in the box right here, and it shoots back above the line. So since a three dropped below, we multiply it by two, and put a six up here. We multiply those, and then we just throw it back up there, right? Now we add. This is where the addition problem comes into play. Every time a number's put back up here, we add straight down and we do it all over again. So seven plus six is gonna give us 13. Now we multiply two and 13 and we get 26. Negative 14 plus 26 is going to give us a positive 12. Positive 12 times positive two will give us a 24. Negative 24 plus positive 24 will give us zero. Now, this specifically is a synthetic division problem that does not have a remainder. 
If you know that you're doing synthetic division problems without a remainder, you must get a zero in this last uh, spot right here, in this last part of your answer. If you don't get a zero there, it means you have a remainder. And at least it, whenever you're first starting synthetic division, you likely are gonna be doing problems without those. So if you're not doing a problem with a remainder, that has to be zero. And it's a pretty good way of checking your work. If that shows up as zero, there's a pretty good chance you did it correctly. Now what we wanna do is we fill in the X's. Now this is kind of the process of taking out this negative two. That's what I like to think about at least, is this is the process to take out the negative two. And the process of taking out that X is a little bit simpler. Taking out an X from each term just means bumping down that X to the third to X to the second, or bumping down that X to the second as to X to the first, and taking that X out completely, right? So that's what we're gonna do on our own down here. Since we had an X to the third in our original problem, it would only make sense that our biggest uh, power is gonna be X to the second down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in, X to the second. Since this is a positive 13, we'll write a plus. And then since X to the second was our last X variable, just X. You can't get any smaller than just X, so no variable there and 12 was positive, so plus. This is our answer. 3X squared plus 13X plus 12. And we finished our synthetic division problem. Simple as that. Now it is possible to do synthetic division for equations with a greater power of, than just x to the third or a variable to the third power. It can be a variable to the fifth power. It could be a variable to the hundredth power. You could still do synthetic division on it. It just takes a little bit bigger of a workspace, right? Now, one thing to always know about synthetic division problems. I'm probably not gonna go into another example, but this is very important to know. If you, in your original problem, let's say you went straight from three X to the third to minus 14 X. Let's say you were missing that X squared term. You still have to account for that whenever you're setting up this problem, whenever you're setting up each of these coefficients. So let's say this wasn't there we would still have to write three, and then we would write zero, indicating there is nothing or no x to the squared value. And then we would move on to that negative 14 and then negative 24. Now this doesn't just go for x squared, this goes for any given power that you're missing all the way through. So if you're missing x to the second, or maybe you're missing just x, even if you are missing the constant, even if it's the equation stopped after that minus 14x, we would still put a zero there because that constant is an integral, integral part of our polynomial. So always remember to put a zero in place of a missing term in our original problem. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if you would like to see some additional problems, um, First off, let me know down below in the comments or at my blog, mrmathclass.blogspot.com. And uh, I probably will put up a couple, another video or two doing different synthetic division problems. I think I'm gonna do one where we fully factor our answers and then one with some rational roots. So that will be exciting. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and I will see you next time.